Little things are big things when it comes to the golf swing. Today, we're gonna to talk about how the littlest things that you're doing might make the biggest difference. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're gonna play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. Years ago, I was frustrated because I lost that. I was confused, I was frustrated, and then I met Mo Norman and learned the single plane swing. And so now, I wake up every day and I know I'm gonna hit it well, I know I'm gonna play well, I know I'm gonna have fun. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're gonna go out there and play great because of the single plane swing. Hey, welcome to the channel today. All right, so I just completed a three-day biomechanics school and what that is it's a program we teach here I'm actually in Phoenix right now and we go through in very detail the single plane swing and so what these students experience is not just hey here's the basic fundamentals we measure everything we get into the amount of rotation in the arm the amount of rotation in the body the amount of bend and side bend we get into heavy detail and here's a couple things that I, that I think will really help you to understand the importance of the things that you're learning, how, how little things are very important to pay attention to, to really get technique. One of the things we ran into at the school was the lead hand position. Now, I wanna, before I get into telling you about what we, what we were seeing at the school and how we corrected it, you have to understand that there's, a, there's this concept that goes out there that people talk about in golf. It's called, it's called swing your own swing. What they mean by that is that you should just develop your own golf swing and then become a good golfer because you're different than everybody else and you have this personality and you're different shapes and sizes. But when you study the biomechanics and when you get into the detail of what's really happening in a golf swing, that's exactly the opposite of what's true. What you find is that everybody's body basically works the same way. But you have to be able to, be, you have to, be able to understand that there's a cause and effect relationship to how people move. And, the, and so people do things differently and it causes their swings to look different. In my opinion, what you should do is learn basic principles of perfect movement and then you'll have a variation because you're different because of that. But there's a basic set of principles. One of those principles is the lead hand. And there's themes that we run into at the schools. Like we'll see certain things and people have their hand in a certain spot. And, and the, a lot of these guys at the school had a lead hand issue. I wanna talk about the lead hand and how much it affects the movement of the club. But I also wanna talk about how an improper lead hand position affects the way your entire body works. I know it's very, it's interesting when you see the science of it. And by the way, I'm gonna go into this detail, but if you're interested in learning all about the single plane swing, in the description below and in, in the first pinned post here, you can pick up my free pocket guide, which will teach you the entire single plane swing. You can have it in your pocket and take it to the range. So don't, don't worry about it if, if you don't get all this stuff, the pocket guide will help you through the single plane swing. So when you get into the swing, don't make sure you click on that link to get the pocket guide. All right, so let's talk about the lead hand. Now, watch what happens. And what, here's what I was seeing at the school. I'm gonna take off my glove to kind of show you this. So a lot of people take this for granted when they grip a golf club. And by the way, when you look at how I teach and the way we teach the single plane swing, we do not teach the grip first. I think that's one of the biggest mistakes in instruction is teaching hands first. Why? And I had a, I had a conversation with, with a recent person posting on my channel saying, Todd, the grip has to be taught first. No, it does not. And I'll tell you why. Because the minute you hold the club, when you hold this club, if you hold it incorrectly, your body is now subject to your hands on the club. For example, you're not letting go of the club. So if you, let's say you grip it with a closed face, you now have to make a body position, an arm position, to compensate for a closed face. Let's say the face is open. You have to have a different rotation and body position to square up an open face. So in other words, the way you put your hands on the club directly affects how your body has to work throughout the swing. So why do I wanna put my hands on the club first and possibly affect my body? Why wouldn't I wanna position my body where I want it and then hold the club and that relationship is where my body needs to be. So again, body position first, then grip. And really what it comes down to is lead arm first, lead hand first, and then 
tilt of the body. See that? Tilt of the body, lead arm, lean hand, and then the trail hand. That's how we teach the address position. But here's what I was seeing at the school. So we have what we call a long thumb, and you have a short thumb. And what happens is, let's say you have a short thumb. And by the way, you probably don't even think about this stuff, but let's say you have a short thumb. I want you to try this. Pull your thumb into a short position where the wrist gets, this is called ulnar deviation, by the way. That's ulnar deviation. So when I put my thumb on the club, if I pull it too much up towards my hand, I want you to try to hinge the hand. Like try to get the hand to make what they call radial deviation. How do you get the hand to move radially? And look, I am limited to that much. See what happened? So there's the angle. That's as much as I can produce. Now watch this. When I slide my thumb a little down the shaft, watch how this angle increases. Do it again. So there's the most I can get right there, and I'm going to move my thumb, and you see the club goes back here. Okay. Do you realize that the club now can produce a lot more speed because I've increased the angle? How do I increase the angle? A simple movement of the thumb. And I don't want it too far down because now it becomes unstable, but it's a stable thumb position that leverages the club. Now, another thing too is look at the club. If the face is on the plane, so the hand is planting the face, creating a nice angle. And that's from the thumb position. We were seeing a lot of the students have a short thumb. Now, here's what happens in their motion. Think about this. So I have a short thumb, incorrect. I take the club back, I don't have enough angle. Well, you want speed, right? So how do I produce speed now when the angle is gone? I try to turn more, right? I'm trying to get movement in the club. So what you see is because of an improper hand position, you over rotation, and if you get too far this way, then they release early coming down. Okay, think about this for a minute. An, incro just a, an improper lead thumb is causing too much rotation and a release early. Yep, that's what biomechanics is all about. So the correction is a proper thumb position lets the club go further into an angle, le less body movement but more club movement, a better rotation, hands lead more power. That's where this biomechanics thing really matters. That's why the fundamental motion has to be paid attention to, the little things. Because if you get the hand incorrect, and some of you are like, ah, oh, good enough on my hand position. Well, you're wrong. Because getting the hands on the club correctly makes all the difference to how you leverage the club, how you move the club more effortlessly and produce more speed. So let me hit a shot and I'll show you this because, because if I grab a, a club with a short thumb, which I never do, but if I did, it limits my hand position. I can only hinge to there and it slows, it's going to slow the club down so I can't hit it very far because it's restricting arm movement. Now, I put the thumb in the correct place so it's in that medium position that I like. I'm in a single plane motion and look at the club now. It frees up my wrist action and now the club can move with a lot more speed effortlessly. So the question here is how do we produce a golf swing with more club movement, less effort, less stress, and we have to be efficient. And that's the term we use a lot in biomechanics is efficiency. Efficiency is a term for, I want to move the club very fast, but with the least amount of effort, right? And so when I correctly position the hands and, and it comes down to, it comes down to paying a little bit of attention to what's correct. And this is what we get into in the, in the bio school, making sure that your fundamentals are great. You can move correctly that club now moves with a lot of freedom and I can produce speed very easily on the club. Anyway, hope that helps. Pay attention to little things. Give me a thumbs up, click the bell icon. Thanks for joining me. See you in the next video.